Um, the uh, match day in Stratford, noise, pollution, and everything else that goes with the game. So I think this plan, and I know that people said about consultation, and that led to Liverpool on the Mondays through their football uh, committees. And there's something that always annoys me with Liverpool Football Club and other agencies. When they say consultation, they talk sort about of websites. A lot of that people have got access to their, that sort of information. So I think when you talk about consultation with the residents, it's got to be true meaningful consultation where you have to go out and sit in meetings and actually inform residents. So I think that's something that needs to be uh, thought about within the plan. Well, as I say, the risk fight is, is, is key uh, to a lot of people coming in our city to say it. They feel that they're not going to get it. Now, I know it's a small window of opportunity which Liverpool are there talking about, but I do think that needs to be in the mind for the local residents of that area that that is a, a couple of months where they have a peak from the open board of the football club, and they're very fearful that obviously with this plan of permission that that won't be so. Many of the roads around the state were closer three hours before, and with the Tafford Road Air Tafford plan, it does cause a lot of issues for local residents, and I can certainly say that it's myself. One of the things that's been identified is the new Venmore Centre about to be developed between Harbour Street and Venmore Street. A lot with the Bob Pitty Shelter Scheme, the top of Harbour Street needs 24 hour access for health and support services and access for ambulances, therefore, an extension of the current transfer plan may well place some of the local residents at risk or undermine their health and well-being. That needs to be considered. I haven't seen that covered there, so hopefully that will be covered in there by the planning director. Another point which you've also got to consider, and we have time to address this, but to councillors and football fans, is the behaviour of some of the people attending the football match. And it is appalling. There's no other way to describe it. Very small number of people. Draw your remarks from that. Yeah. Yeah. So I think the residents are fearful that they're going to experience the, the, the difficulties that comes to match day, uh, day experiences right through the summer. So I think that's something the planning committee have got to be in mind. And I don't think Liverpool have gone far enough to address these uh, concerns of our fellow residents, certainly in their head and field. Councillor Adele Dowling, and then Councillor Billy Marrow, and then Councillor Speaker Atwood. Comments that 
this is for parking and noise pollution, toilet facilities, bins, and extra security. Be there available for them. Okay, thank you. Councillor Merritt.
I thank them here for it. When we were being sold the new LSC grounds, I have to say the building is, looks magnificent. And the investment is magnificent. And this is about giving more income generation to LSC. We know what that's about. But let's be honest, when are we going to see the promises made at the very first initial uh, consultations and we were talked about park and ride schemes and we were told about possibly reopening the Boot Branch Line. Because that would give people a positive alternative that wouldn't involve traffic congestion and traffic pollution. We all know the consequences of air pollution are becoming a point of bigger public concern but it's not mentioned in the reports. We deserve better. We deserve better. And if LSC are going to get the advantage of greater income generation, and I'm not against that, then it's time to have that reinvested in improving the facilities for public transport so we don't have the congestions. There are positive things that can be done, and they should be done first. Thank you uh, for all our councillors. Now we now have seven people who are coming for to object, and I really appreciate it if you keep your remarks as brief as possible and make your points, different points, not all speaking on the same points, please. So can I invite, first of all, Nicola Cotter to come forward? Residence parking permits to be addressed if this application goes through. 
there's inadequate public transport. Buses are stopped and will not stop at certain stops for as much as 90 minutes before some games and for a considerable period of time afterwards. So I also think the other issues that you want to have in these, like the music festivals, the additional score, we've got to look at things like the impact of alcohol on crowd behaviour, how they behave as they leave the stadium. We've heard how they urinate against people's walls, how there's fights, aggressive behaviour. These are intolerable if you're a resident of the city and a resident of Anfield. And you feel more and more that Anfield is an area in decline. We're suffering. It needs work doing. It, all these issues need addressing. There's litter, there's noise. Um, I know that many of these issues have been raised, but I really hope that both the football ground that really need to think about giving back to the area they live. We've had plan after plan, mess after mess, sort of in terms of roads being left to go down it. If we really need, Liverpool need to give back as well as take from us. So I hope that both the football um, company and the city council will take the concerns and the negative impact that this has on our lives very seriously. Thank you. Nothing has happened about 
from lupine or, or any reasonable, reasonable alternative that has been taken up by me and the and supporters. Uh, I'd also like to point out the number of, the number of cars going into the area and going out of the area after a match or after an event is causing gridlock on the streets for an hour beforehand. So two laps hard after the match or after the event, you can't move around Anfield. It's taken me two hours to do a, uh, a sort of 15 minute journey before now um, to, get, to, get, to get somewhere. Um, okay, that, that's all I want to say.
the ATO won't implement funds not getting on the main percentage, they're not going on to the, the transport, so the funds buses. So that needs addressing, that needs to be marshaled, it needs shown. You know, he's going to, you know, I can say everything everybody else has said, a little scary road next to your entry. I've got two young men in my house, you know, regardless of the Everton supporters. And that uh, years ago, we were never at home because we were always away when Everton were away now because of the way the fixtures are. But at home, and they're going out arguing with men who have spoke disrespectfully to me because I, I've questioned that the, 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 the urinating on the, on the alley base. Now, I don't expect that, but I expect some respect. You know, I was in daylight talking to a 91-year-old 90, resident and two men in broad daylight walked up and urinated and they are like, actually, excuse me. And it's like, so Liverpool Football Club, I've got to, I've got to address this because it's really, really an, an embarrassment of being a resident of Anfield, of being just a local person of Liverpool, that there's no two facilities whatsoever. You know, and I understand that the, the people have travelled um, and had drink. But again, we've got the weddings, we've got the um, Christmas parties, you know, again, with the, the concerts and things like that. It's more the alcohol that's going to be consumed, is my, my uh, concern, when they're going in, when they're coming out, when the stewards, who's going to be stewing it, you know, to, to get people to, to disembark from around the area. So these are every one of us, and I want people to understand. No, anyone who lives in Anfield, I mean, it's up to live in Anfield because I bought a house there. But what we, you know, we've had this for years and years now. The football club saying this, that, and the other, regardless of how many pounds have been put in. But we need some reassurance that if this does not, I do understand that I'm sure. Yes, I'm yeah, so can I just call on that on George from the lunch number? Hi, I'm George McLellan from the Friends of Stanley Park. The society has been going on for the years since 1989. Um, I've been all here in Liverpool in a multi million, happy billion pound company. You really don't care about the people that are there, you know this for a fact. They just, 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 you know, they get more money from Sky, but they don't actually need the supporters, so they definitely don't need to be here to local people. So, you know, all this discussion about how they're going to build on local people, it's, it's, a little, it's a little crap, really, because all they're going to do is do what they want to do, and hopefully you lot will listen to what these bold people are saying. And if you don't believe, go on the way Excuse out. me now, George, but not you lot, we're not the planning committee, I've not been to address this correctly, please. The planning committee should go and swap houses with these people that live there and let them have a good season and see what it's like. These actual extra money things they're going to put on. Uh, once you get in, they'll extend it. Think of these 10 gate, these 10 extra day events, they'll extend it. We know, you know, once that's been in for a few years and then everyone's going, oh yeah, they're building it, they're building it, they're doing this, they're not. We all know they're not doing that. They're just thinking the money. The local people are getting on. All the shops that are around the area, they all shot on Saturday, they all shot as a match on. The only thing that'll open are little cat chippies and little pups. And then that's what happens when they've got John in, top of this everywhere. Uh, the park has actually been ripped apart since the stage of actually started going to get the other park, which you've all agreed on, which you've discussed. It's the plan that you've all agreed on, which you've discussed. Uh, since then, we've lost the tennis course, which all the names, we've lost the children's garden. Uh, the park could cut back, so the, the car is uh, starting to see me to parts. Uh, the actual animals that live there, there's a match on, people are going on box, oh yeah, well, you know, whether the score a goal, it's horrendous. If they're playing concerts, that noise is going to be going on, oh, all nice. nice. Things like bats and that, they don't know where the hell they go. You know, people might laugh, oh yeah, bats, but you know, if you've got a noise going on for like three or four hours constantly, not just because there's a goal, but constantly, it's going to affect the animals in there, it's going to affect the lights. The light situation is going to be disrupted, it's going to be on until 12 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 11 o'clock in the morning. Uh, the noise, the pollution is going to be extra, it's going to go on. Like we said there, it's going to be the old free nights, these are the free between May and August, but it'll be a free, free time. I've been in Sunny Battle 26 years, when there's a match on, you can't get the other place. 
Quando si marciò, il figlio si fa parlare, si deve essere arrampicato, 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 si deve essere e che è posto che tu possa fare a Francia, e che è il carico che si trova a Francia, e che non ha come si sta in mare, perché il popolo è stato in mare, e che non si sta 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 in And you've now had three and a half hours. And anyway, I think this is supposed to be physically on this. It's a sad day because they will extend, extend. We'll go for both of the virus. All they do is take, 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 get long back. Thank you. I'm going to hand over now to our planning officer to answer some of these points. But I think we should make it clear that there are two separate applications here. Really that complicated. They are, as you've heard, 
terms about the activity uh, that currently takes place at the match and the consequences of extending that to a great range of sporting good, uh, events and all the consequences that will have on residential amenity and on highway movements and so on um, that, that, that are currently experienced as part of the uh, football activities. Um, in terms of the principle of development, you've got a number of policies that you as a planning committee will need to consider. Um, you've got a unit development plan uh, which is now somewhat dated, but there are policies in there that um, recognise the importance of the club in terms of their contribution to the area. Uh, more particularly, the uh, local plan policies, um, EC3 and EC4, have been, particular, have been specifically um, uh, written to address uh, the sort of contribution um, uh, of Liverpool as a tourist destination and uh, the, the contribution uh, that the clubs make to that. Um, and that is obviously something you uh, ultimately, as a planning committee, will need to uh, consider uh, in your deliberations. In terms of traffic and transport matters, um, the uh, applicants have uh, explained, as on page 39 of your agenda papers, uh, that the event management plan will be produced uh, for the event, uh, that will include the transport management strategy, that is currently how it uh, takes place at the moment. And then um, the, the highway comments, as I say, also have on page 39 and 40. Um, and the conclusion that is reached is that the additional sporting events um, can be managed successfully on the, on, on the same way uh, that existing events are managed, um, subject to appropriate conditions. Clearly, in terms of residential amenity, a um, uh, number of speakers have already raised concerns about the activities that already take place um, and the, the, the effect that that has on their uh, amenity. Um, again, the head of planning's view is that uh, these can be um, mitigated through appropriate management. Um, and um, again, the applicant uh, spoke about some of the issues and the way that the court are trying to address those issues. Um, in terms of other matters, Chair, um, the application was accompanied by uh, a back report. That's being looked at again by our external consultants and they're satisfied that there are no impacts. I don't wish to add anything further in relation to this item, Chair. There are clearly matters that you, as a planning committee, need to consider, um, and essentially it's whether or not those extended sporting events are acceptable, having regard to the um, policies within the unit development plan, the emerging local plan, and other material considerations, which include obviously the contribution uh, that this um, would make to the uh, local economy. I can answer any further questions. So we will take two questions just in relation to item five, yes. Okay, so Councillor Doyle, yeah, because we're doing these separately now. Um, so I might have the wrong number. Yeah, we're, we're talking about sporting events. I'll take any questions for the planning officer to do with the sporting events. So Councillor Doyle, have you still got your question? Um, not to question. I think this is premature, Councillor John. Okay. We'll go on to Councillor Cummings' question if it's to do with gender identity. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Uh, just a question on, on, on the overview that you just gave us and uh, with regard to uh, the residents who have come up and spoken about their issues uh, on, the, on, on the, the dealing with match days or event days. And you mentioned that. Uh, Appropriate planning, appropriate uh, management has been done with regard to the mitigating issues. Now, to me, it's clear that there must have been uh, arrangements with the Liverpool Football Club about dealing with the likes of uh, parking and the anti social issues. But it's clear to me that the residents that live there, those things aren't happening. It's very, very clear to me. Now, before this, I was quite happy with supporting this, and I'm clearly not happy with it now. So I'll hand over to our planning officer to answer that point and to carry on with our um, deliberations for agenda item six. Yeah, in terms of the, the sort of uh, some of the 
the antisocial behaviour issues that have been um, identified within the agenda papers and uh, by the speakers this morning. Clearly planning uh, can only go so far in terms of what it is able to do to control that activity. It's antisocial behaviour is antisocial behaviour irrespective of, of what a planning commission might say. Um, again, I can only refer you back to uh, what the uh, applicant said in her presentation right at the beginning of this that the club are aware of these issues and they do take them seriously. Um, it's entirely up to you, Chair, if you want to bring the, the applicant back and have to pick up on some of those points because I suspect that other councils might um, want to raise those as well. Councillor Rainey. Yes, Chair, I mean, we have sat through the last half hour listening to a range of issues from um, the residents in the landfield um, and I think that should come back and discuss those issues with us now. Do not members of the planning committee agree with Councillor Rainey we should invite the um, applicant back at this stage as opposed to at the end of the agenda item six? Could I invite the applicant to come back to address the committee's points, please?